Hello, over the next few episodes we're going to be working on a mini stealth game project. So in this game you're just trying to get to the finish zone without being spotted by the guards. This is going to work in the same way as the previous Falling Blocks project, where every now and again I'll describe what we're going to be implementing next, and then challenge you to pause the video and try and get it working on your own. Alright, so in a new Unity project I'm going to start off by creating a uh, ground plane. I'll just scale this up a bit and I'm going to create a material for it, uh, just call this ground. I'll make that a nice dark grey and just assign it. Alright, then I'm also going to create a capsule object which is going to act as our first guard. So I'll rename this to guard and I'm also going to create a new c -sharp script also called guard and attach that to the guard object. Now we're going to want to be able to define a path for the guard to patrol. So I'm going to create an empty game object called path. And this is going to hold a bunch of empty children which will act as each of the waypoints in that path. So I'm just going to go into top view quickly and then create empty child, which I'll call waypoint one. And then if I duplicate that, I can drag it out keep duplicating and just make a simple little path. Um, it's a bit difficult to design the path though when we can't actually see the waypoints, but I don't want to give them an actual graphic, so instead what we'll do is use something called gizmos. And gizmos are just things like this little light icon here and also the camera icon, just things that you can see while you're in the editor, but which won't actually appear in the final build of the game. So uh, how we'll do this is we'll go into the guard script and in here, create a public transform variable called the path holder. So if I just save that, uh, that's going to just have the path object assigned to it. And then in a special method called onDrawGizmos, we can loop through all of the children in the path holder. So we do that with a for each loop, for each transform call that waypoint in the path holder. We can say gizmos.draw, and I'll just draw a little sphere at the waypoint's position, so waypoint.position with a radius of just say 0.3. Now if we save that and go into Unity, you can see these little uh, waypoint gizmos show up, and as we add more waypoints and move these around, you can uh, see that visualized here in the scene view. And if you want to be able to see them in the game, you can also toggle gizmos on, and now those are visible there. But once again, once you actually build the game, these will no longer be visible. Now, it would also be quite nice if we could join each of these spheres with a line. So above the loop, I'm going to create a vector 3 called start position which I'll set equal to the position of the first waypoint in the path. So we can say pathholder.getChild, and we want the child with an index of zero, and we'll just get the position of that child. And then I'll write vector3 previous position is initially equal to the start position. And inside the loop, we can then simply say gizmos.drawLine from the previous position to the current waypoint position, and then the previous position gets set to the current waypoint position. All right, so now if we go into Unity, we can see these are each uh, joined with lines. And if we want this to sort of operate as a loop with the final waypoint connecting back to the first waypoint, then we can, at the end of the loop, say uh, gizmos.drawLine, from the previous position to the starting position. All right, so like that, we should now have a closed loop. All right, so now that we've got this nice little visualization, we want to get the guard actually moving along this path. So let's go back into the script, and I'm gonna create a start method and in here, I want an array of all of the positions of the waypoints in the path. So I'll create a vector3 array called waypoints and set this equal to a new array of vector3s. 
and the size of that should be the number of children that the pathholder object has. So we can get that with simply pathholder dot child count. We'll then want to loop through each index of our waypoints array. So for int i equals zero, i less than waypoints dot length, i plus plus. We can now say waypoints with an index of i should be equal to the ith uh, child of the path holder. So pathholder dot get child with an index of i, and we want the position of that child. All right, so now that we have an array of all the points in the path, it's time for the first challenge, which is to get the guard patrolling the path. There should be a variable to control his speed, and also one to control how long he waits at each waypoint before moving on to the next one. Note that the guard moves in a loop going back to the first waypoint when he reaches the end. Okay, so hopefully we're able to get it working. I'll now quickly go through my own implementation. So I'll start by creating a public float for the speed. So that's something like five and a public float for the wait time at each waypoint, maybe 0.3. Then I'm going to create a follow path coroutine. So I enumerator follow path, taking in an array of vector threes called waypoints. And I'll start by making sure that the guard is positioned at the first waypoint. So just transform.position is equal to waypoints with an index of zero. I then want an integer to keep track of the index of the waypoint that we're currently moving towards. So int target waypoint index is equal to one, since we're already at the first waypoint, so we'll now be moving towards the second one. And then a vector three for the actual position of the target waypoint. So that's equal to waypoints with an index of target waypoint index. And then we can start our loop. So we'll just loop forever. So while true, we're going to move the guard towards the target waypoint with transform.position is equal to vector3.move towards from our current position to the target waypoint. And the maximum distance we can move this frame is equal to speed multiplied by time dot delta time. All right, now if we reach the target waypoint, so if transform dot position is equal to target waypoint, then we're going to want to move on to the next waypoint. So we can say target waypoint index is equal to target waypoint index plus one mod waypoints dot length. So remember the modulus operator uh, means that when this value is equal to this value, it will go back to zero. So uh, we can now say uh, that our target waypoint is equal to waypoints with an index of target waypoint index. And now that we've reached the waypoint, we'll want to pause for the wait time. So yield return new wait for seconds, passing in our wait time variable. And then outside of this if statement, we'll just want to yield for one frame between each iteration of the while loop. So yield return null. Okay, we just need to start the follow path coroutine now. So in the start method, let's say start coroutine follow path and pass in our waypoints array. Let's save this and give it a try. So if I press play, we can see we're now moving between each waypoint. And once we get to the last one, uh, we loop to the first one. Now, one thing that's a bit irritating is that the guard has sort of sunk into the ground. So going back into the script, we will want to make sure that the waypoints have the same height on the y-axis as the guard object. So once we've assigned to waypoints i, we can say waypoints i is equal to a new vector three, and on the x-axis it can just stay the same, so waypoints i dot x, but on the y-axis we'll set it equal to the guard's position on the y-axis. 
And then of course the z-axis just stays the same as well, so waypoints i.z. Alright, so if we save this and try it again now, we'll see that the guard stays, thankfully, above the ground. Okay, let's now give our guard a spotlight. So I'm going to create a new light object, choose the spotlight, and I'll parent that to the guard object, and just reset the transform, and just move it down on the ground here. So we can't really see it at the moment, but if we increase the range and the intensity, we should be able to see it uh, streaming out. And maybe make this a yellowish color. Just something like that is nice. Uh, all right, so having done that, we're actually already ready for the second challenge. After reaching each waypoint and waiting for however long, the guard should now rotate to face the next waypoint before moving off. Alright, so uh, let me once again quickly work through my own implementation. So I'll start with a public float for the turn speed, set this equal to 90, so that's 90 degrees per second, and then I'll create a uh, new coroutine called turn to face and this will take in a vector 3 for the look target and I want to calculate the angle that the guard will need to have on the y-axis to be facing the look target. So we know that if we have a direction we can use trigonometry to find the corresponding angle. So I'm going to create a vector 3 called direction to look target which is equal to look target minus our own position dot normalized. Then the target angle is going to be equal to 90 minus arctan2 of direction to look target dot z, comma direction to look target dot x, and that's in radians, so we need to multiply it by this conversion factor of radians to degrees. All right, now to make the guard rotate towards this target angle over time, I'm going to need a loop. And for now, I'll just make this loop forever. And in here, I'll create a float angle, which is equal to mathf.move towards angle, going from the current uh, rotation on the y-axis, so transform.eulerangles.y, to the target angle, with a max uh, delta, this frame, of turn speed multiplied by time dot delta time. All right, and I'll set transform dot Euler angles equal to vector three dot up multiplied by the angle. And then we want to yield for one frame between each iteration of the while loop. So simply yield return null. Now I'd like this while loop to stop running once the guard is facing the look target. So I'm going to be using a method in the mathf struct called delta angle, which tells us how many degrees apart two angles are. So I'll say while mathf dot delta angle uh, between the uh, current Euler angle on the y-axis and the target angle, while that delta angle is greater than zero, keep rotating towards the target angle. Now, it's a little bit dangerous actually to just use a value of zero here, because due to small imprecisions, the Euler angles might never exactly reach the target angle. So it's better to use just some small value here, say 0 0.05, and that will be a lot safer. Okay, now up in the follow path coroutine, after we've finished waiting at the waypoint, we can start coroutine and turn to face the new target waypoint. Now I'd like to wait while the guard is rotating, so we can just tack on a yield return command here. Now right up at the top of the coroutine, I'd also like to make it so that the guard initially faces the target waypoint. So we can just say transform dot look at target waypoint. Okay, so if I save this and now go and run the game in Unity, hopefully this will work correctly, and it does seem to be working fine. I'm just going to uh, uh,
turn the wait time down to zero and just ratchet up the turn speed and move speed variables just to make sure that it doesn't break. And it seems to be working very reliably, so that's good. Okay, now the third challenge is to create the player controller. You should be able to move the player around using the arrow keys and the player should rotate to face the direction of movement. The controller should also make use of a rigid body for collision detection. Alright, I'll go over my implementation in the next episode. Until then, cheers.